Welcome everyone to the Amazon Prime press tour event of London and James, the modern day Bonnie and Clyde love story. It's coming out on Christmas Day and we have here the, some of the cast of London and James and you're in for a treat. Welcome, welcome everyone. So here we are at the event and here I am with I should say Jeremy or Jay, because you're actually known by both names. Yes, Jeremy yes. C.Y. Butler and yes. also as Jay Sykes. Now, today, <laughs> oh. w which one is it? And first of all, let's just start at the very beginning. Um, you are known as Jeremy C.Y. Butler mm. and you're also known as Jay Sykes. Tell me a little bit about both. Um, so Jeremy C.Y. Butler, um, as a kid, always knew that film was the way to go. I always wanted to be an actor. Um, and then, you know, coming up, I would make my own little home videos. So Tri J Productions started with three J's, me, my brother, and my sister, Jared and Janae. Um, and then, you know, once I got to high school, I actually made the production company legit. And I started coming up with sketches and content to put on Instagram and social media. And that's where Jay Sykes was born. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much like my, my, my other side that I get to show people, my creative side. We're going to talk to your dear friend here, Edwin Maker Jr., yes. who not only plays the character Sam, but is also the assistant director of London and James. Yes, it was a pleasure being a part of the project. Okay, Edwin, tell us a little bit more about the character Sam. So Sam, of course, is uh, the best friend of James and London. Uh, we, the three of us have been friends, you know, since children. So, um, you know, we, we grow up, Sam and uh, London, I'm sorry, James and London, uh, they both, you know, they're about um, doing right by people and make sure people don't get taken advantage of. And when, it, when that happens, um, they, you know, they, they're basically, basically vigilantes. They're, they stand up for the voiceless. Uh, and me, myself, I'm with them, but I have my own side underground thing that I'm doing that isn't always right. Um, Sam is, um, he, he, loves, he likes money, so for the right price, he'll do things. Um, but um, also, uh, Sam, uh, Sam has a good heart. And um, he, he's dipping in and out of things. Um, Lennon and James, they have to save him a time or two uh, from things that isn't necessarily, doesn't go into detail in the movie. But um, all in all, he's, he's a good person, but his lifestyle catches up to him. So he's a bit misunderstood as well, would you say? Yeah, okay. yeah he's a bit misunderstood. <laughs> but when something happens to Sam in the film, it sets off a whole stream of events. Yes. Um, can you tell us a little bit about why Sam is so important in the film, the character of Sam? Sam is important because, um, like you said, it, it sets off like a, a trickle of events and London and James don't know exactly what Sam was into, but they do their investigation and, you know, they find out that he was into some things that he shouldn't have been. Um, and London and James, well, really more so James, he has... Um, enemies, um, people don't like him just because people don't like him because they know he's getting away with things that he shouldn't also. Um, so he has like an uphill battle. He has people, the police, they want to lock him up because they know he's been getting into some things. Um, but they just can't find the dirt. Like he always covers his tracks. Um, so it's, it's kind of like an uphill battle, but Sam is important because, um, I don't want to go. I don't want to go too deep. Trying I want to give to see. Too much away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he Sam is working. Don't with spill some, the beans. Don't <laughs> spill the beans. Let's just say Sam is working for somebody that he shouldn't be, and he should be more open with his friends, but he's not. Um, but Sam is important. He because he's living two different lifestyles. You see the good guy when he's with Lennon and James, but when he's by himself, he's a whole different person. The, you can see that there was a certain chemistry within the cast when you're actually seeing this on, you know, on film because you, you work together so well. But one yeah. of the things that I would like to talk about is the character James. Okay. Is he I misunderstood? Mean, is he James a misunderstood? James might be a little misunderstood. Um, 
He's more of a vigilante. Like he's doing ruthless things that normal people wouldn't do, but for the right reason, or at least in his mind, is for the right reason. Um, in the trailer for London and James, you see that. I hate to say it, but my guy, my guy, something happens, something terrible happens to this guy. Yeah. And um, that pretty much sends us on our warpath. So we're pretty much trying to seek justice and revenge for Edwin's character. Um, we do we do some crazy things, but at least you know we love you, bro. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> so, that aside of playing from the character Sam, you're also the assistant director. Yeah. So the, the establishing scene, I think, of the film with I think the three of you are sitting, you're also the assistant director, you're acting in the film, James also is directing the film, as is London. How was that? Was that, was that difficult to be uh, that kind of scenario? Um, I, think, I think as long as you take your time um, with it and you map it out, uh, studying the script, because I didn't write it, um, but as long as you study the script, study the scene that, that you're directing that day, you're fine. So it, it, I would say it isn't difficult because when it comes to acting and directing, you have to pay attention to every subtlety and like the, you know, the minor details which makes it so great. Because if you miss something like that, uh, it doesn't come, um, it doesn't, it's not its best. Um, I will say, I don't know, he might not like me no more, but, but <laughs> Brolin, Brolin B. Sheree Patterson, she came in like, mm, like really hard. And I kind of felt like she brought like this energy and she was like, no, no, it's not good enough. Let's do it again. So, I think she was the best director on this project. We still friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, <laughs> of course, of course, of course. Because she brought the energy. And I, but I think it all made us better. Like, we got to, like, nup, do it again, do it again. Yeah. So I think because we were, like, a team and, like, the three of us were directing and we caught things that the other one didn't catch, yeah. um, it, 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 it made it, like, an easy process. So in terms of actually you're talking about how your, your character... James. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the rest of the bigger film and how James interacts with the the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the story, a little bit more about the storyline? So James growing up wasn't really best on the best terms with his mother. Um, she was into some certain things. Her lifestyle was different. Um, and her background, her, her backstory is just you know, when you see the movie, you'll, you'll understand why she's moving a certain way and how she operates. But James, well, he lived a rough life. And that kind of turned him into like a little beast. Like anybody that steps on his shoe, he's going to make sure, hey, say sorry, or I'm going I'm to I'm handle that. So he's, he's ruthless, but he has a background and a reason in his head for why he's doing everything. Um, he met London. They've been like best friends for years. Um, Sam is also they're their best friends so when that's kind of shifted and changed that that sends us in a, a downward spiral so let's just go back to you in terms of the wider picture of your involvement again in the film mm -hmm. you're the director you're the producer you act in it but you're also the editor as well amongst a host of other things um looking at the closing credits i don't think anyone's seen anything quite like it <laughs> since eddie murphy's uh i think the nutty professor i, <laughs> I mean literally where you you see your name mentioned on every other line Absolutely. um how much blood, sweat, and tears went into the making of this? That's my passion. So looking at the credits, you're like, I don't understand how somebody can just sit there for those many hours and do that, but I love this. Like, I would do it for free. And, you know, my parents always told me, find something that you would do for free, do it, and get paid to do that. And you'll always be happy. Um, so editing is a very time-consuming thing, but I love it. Um, writing probably takes a little more time than editing it at certain times, depending on if it's a short film or a feature. But I love what I do, so I don't look at it as work. This is this is all fun for me. Look at everything he just named. He said he, <laughs> he does the camera, he sure. edits, he does music, he writes, directs, produces. I'm running out of fingers. I'm, uh, who's the assistant I'm director to this project? I mean, it's me, you, but right? I mean, you know. And... You, you, I need more stuff for you, though. Not really, you know. No. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it after the interview. I wanted to know, could you actually try to impersonate his character James, and also could you impersonate his character so you, Sam for this me? This guy, 
So not even my character, just him talking like me and every. How do I how do I talk to people? So am I am I imitating Jay Sykes or am I imitating James? James. I'm doing James. The vigilante. <laughs> not that face. Not the face though. Not the face, bro. <laughs> All right, so you brawling, I'm you. Why am I brawling? Why I got to Okay, I'm brawling. Just because she made it to a few after-school program meetings don't mean she's a good mother. James, listen, right? This maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Run it back, run it back. I got it, I got it. <laughs> yeah, run it back. Is that how, is that how, is that how B. Sheree talks? I James. think James. So. Yeah, yeah, you got it, you got it. James, you just had a Big Mac. Now listen, <laughs> don't smile, don't smile. Your mother loves you, all right? So I need you to go in there. I, I want to meet her. Can I meet her? I haven't met her. I don't want you to meet her. Wake up! <laughs> Can't you see? I didn't do this. I didn't do this. I didn't do this. <laughs> I never did this. He actually- Wasn't it like you said, wake up in some scene? You said wake up, but I didn't do my hands. You didn't do like that? Yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> He actually does an impression of me like like Jay Sykes. Like how I talk every day. Like Let's how, hear it. How do I? So, okay, so. No, nah, don't, <laughs> he about to put a disclaimer on it. That's how you know it's gonna be disrespectful. So it's a lot of people that walk up to us after we premiere a movie. <laughs> and I'm, where I'm the, about to be you, so. Where did the movie premiere? It premiered uh, right here where we're at right now, Hoyt's West, West Nursery Third, uh, Hoyt's West Nursery Theater in Lithica, Maryland. Yep, so, you know, we get a lot of support with uh, Lithicum, and, um, you know, we can pretty much do anything here. We actually filmed in this theater, filmed a scene here, so um, they support us a lot. No Shout problem. out definitely to the theater and cinema. So, yeah. so how am I when I meet fans, man? When you met Amari, he was like, hey, how you doing, young man? Yeah, God bless you. So I hear you're an actor. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's real good. So, you know, you just got to work hard, be passionate, be on time, you know, be respectful to everyone. And, um, you know, you'll, you'll go far, but you got to love what you do. Because if you waste my time, I'm going to fire you. All right. Yeah. And then <laughs> yeah. there was uh, another young lady who came up. She's like, um, Kelly. oh, my gosh, it's so nice to meet you. He's like, hey, how you doing, girl? Yeah, it's nice to meet you, too. Yeah, thank you. Like the movie. Why am I whispering yeah. though? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, you put on the sexy voice for the lady. Oh, okay. I yeah. mean, that's my normal voice, but I mean, yeah, so yeah, it's real good. Here, yeah, give me, give me my sugar. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> so, Christmas Day, twenty twenty. Tell us again, oh every why well, everyone should just go out and get this film. You want to go first? Uh, I mean, it's a great film. It's it's something London and James are people that this world really needs. But um, so it, it's it's action packed. Um, it has like a moral. It has morals in it. Um, it's just a, a all around good film. Like it's it's definitely a, a good buy. So um, London and James definitely support it. December twenty fifth, Amazon. You Amazon guys Prime Video. Um. Go out and see, because I said so. No, um, <laughs> we just had so much fun making this. And like I said, it's like a family. Every, or the cast and crew is like family. So you get to see that chemistry on screen. I mean, with myself and my mom, you don't get to see that chemistry as much. But <laughs> we're going to talk about that in a minute. Oh, we're going to talk about Mommy P. Yeah. Oh, we're yeah. going to get to Mommy P. So James, tell me, why should people go out and buy this film on Christmas Day on Amazon Prime? Um, it's, it's, it's an amazing adventure. Um, you know, Chadwick Boseman inspired us a lot just by his role selection and the people that we look up to as well, like Will Smith, uh, Denzel Washington, Michael B. Jordan, just black cinema needs to blow up in a bigger way. And seeing Black Panther and seeing, uh, Black and Blue by Deion Taylor, like, I was proud when I walked out of the theater. I was, I was proud to support a black film. So that's what we want to do. We want to bless, um, you know, all of our viewers, all of our fans with, with our content. We always have a message in, in what we create. So there's always underlying tones that you can take with you and, and use them in everyday life. So. Next up on the Amazon Prime press tour event is B. Sherry Patterson. 
the actress, the director, the producer, and she stars as the character London. And you may also know her playing as playing Harriet Tubman in the film documentary film that is Harriet Tubman. Um, B. Cherry Patterson, welcome. Well, I am super excited to be doing this very socially distanced uh, interview about London and James, which comes to Amazon Prime on December 25th. That is right. Christmas Day, you're going to get a fantastic gift of London and James streaming right at home in your living room. First of all, I'd like to ask you, how did you and Jay meet? So how did Jeremy and I meet? Well, fun fact, we actually met on the set of another project um, that we were working on together. Uh, It was actually my very first uh, film project. Uh, Up until that point, I'd been doing stage acting for the most part. um, And one of my stage uh, co-partners invited me to audition for this role. And then uh, we ended up working opposite each other uh, on that particular set. And we just clicked um, creatively. Uh, we clicked on screen. Um, it, it was just a lot of like chemistry going on um, on screen. And then off screen, we just loved hanging out together. Uh, super great, super fun. Uh, we were always joking on each other. Um, his name in our household is Jeremy. So there are uh, lots of stories that go along with that particular uh, moniker for him. But <laughs> so tell me, what was your inspiration behind your character? So what inspired our characters, London and James? Um, part of that actually came from the the previous project that I was talking about. And so we decided to do a little bit of a spinoff. So in that particular project, um, he played a guy named Des, who was like this big like gangster person. Um, and then I played like his pseudo girlfriend, but I was really just in it for myself. Um, and so we decided to take that and kind of morph it into more of like a Bonnie and Clyde, like ride or die type of a uh, dynamic. And uh, we just really wanted to have fun and go like shoot big guns with their friends and (laughs) um and then just kind of have like this like action uh type movie i really wanted to start to get into some of those roles uh because i have um like real world experience um you know krav maga and i've also done combatives um in a previous life um and then it, it just was like hey let's let's experiment let's see how this goes and let's just have fun making a movie What were some of the challenges that you found on set? So challenges on set, there were quite a few, um, but nothing that we couldn't get through together. Um, So we did have a little bit of a a challenge finding um, locations. Uh, We wanted to film in the D.C. area, but with a feature film that has a ton of different locations um it's very difficult to try and find that and to do it all for like a lower budget um so that was one challenge uh another challenge was literally casting there's so much talent in the dmv so much talent and like i said it first started out as like a thing we wanted to do between friends and we kind of knew who we like wanted to be a part of it and then it just blew up into this whole thing where we were holding auditions and we were really like bringing people in i think our cast uh, including um some background actors ended up being over like 65 people um which was way larger than any of us uh, thought it would be which was fantastic and amazing uh but that did create um a few challenges on making sure everybody was fed um you know when we had those longer days um and making sure that they all fit in the locations and so uh there were there were a few uh, challenges uh and then i think the biggest challenge um was me trying to remember my lines while i was directing myself slash being directed by jeremy even though we wrote it. It's re- it sounds really weird, but like once you, you know, you write a project and then you kind of go through like the whole production or pre-production process and then you're like filming. And so I would be filming, um, you know, one scene with, with Jeremy in it and directing him. And then the very next scene, you know, I'm thinking about like he's directing notes and then he's like directing me and I'm like, 
Oh wait, what was my line again? So it was, it was, it was so funny. It was terrible, but it was funny. Um, now looking back on it on the set, I was a little upset, but, <laughs> um, but overall, uh, it was a really great experience. It, it really did end up being, Hey, I want to go make a movie, um, with some of my close friends and it, it just exploded from there. So what did you do to prepare for your role? Um, a, I, uh, did my hair a lot, uh, between the days that we were filming, um, at one point, we thought it'd be a good idea. Oh, I'll just wear my hair straight. That way I don't have to worry about like my curl pattern looking one kind of way one day and then like a different kind of way the next day. That ended up being a lot of work. So hair prep was a big deal. Um, but the other thing is I got in the gym. Um, there were quite a few stunts that, that we were doing. Um, and while I do have like a background in that, I wanted to make sure that I was like, I look good for film. Now, thankfully, we filmed in the winter, so there wasn't a lot of, like, skin showing. Uh, that was fine with me, but um, I wanted to make sure that, you know, I could uh, take a hit, you know, in the event I needed to, that, you know, I had the stamina when we were doing some of the longer fight scenes. Um, and so I, you know, was in the gym uh, five to six times a week. Um, you know, I changed my diet around and, and really, like, got into it for this role. Um, but then also I just wanted to like channel that inner like bad A chick um, that I'd always really wanted to be um, or play, I should say, or be, yeah, we're gonna go with be. Um, because up until that point, a lot of my roles had been very damsel in distress, uh, kind of more meek, milder, um, very um, insecure, uh, type of roles. And so this is going to be an opportunity to break away for that for me. Um, and so I wanted to try and, and, and bring that out, um, and take a little bit of myself, uh, uh, with me. And, um, I think coming out of that role, of uh, playing London actually started to kind of bleed over into my work life and I became more confident. Um, I became more assertive um, in, in, you know, what I needed, uh, the resources I needed in order to get my work done. Um, and so it, it definitely actually helped. London helped me um, and London prepared me for my own life. So that was a really, really great experience. So question is for you. What's next? What is next? Well, uh, 2021. Yeah, we're just going to start with that. If we can make it to next year uh, and some of the craziness can kind of stop, uh, that would be great. Um, no, but so right now I'm actually stuck on lockdown in another country. Um, so when I get back home to America, um, I will be uh, back in the D.C. area, uh, definitely looking to do uh, several more product, uh, projects. Um, I did just have a, a short film called St. Charles. We were finalists in the Lit Scares Horror International Film Festival. Uh, so that was uh, super fantastic. I have another short film that I directed coming out called Brother. Um, again, stuck in lockdown. Uh, we're going to uh, finish a few, a um, little bit of the filming when it, once I get back. Uh, and then I'm just going to jump right back in, uh, to the acting side of the house. I, I did take a break to do a little bit of directing, got some producing, uh, have my production company, Salute the Moon Productions, LLC. Um, and once, you know, I get back, we're just going to be right back in it and, uh, hopefully be making another movie with my partner, um, Jay Sykes over there. So, uh, stay tuned for more. We'll see what happens next. B. Cherry Patterson, thank you so much for joining us. Um, this has been a wonderful event over here at the cinema, and we wish you were here, of course, but Christmas Day, we know where we're all going to be is on Amazon Prime, getting the film, London and James. Yeah, so it's been really awesome getting to interview uh, and, and really getting to talk about London and James. Um, I felt like we didn't really get to do that because I ended up moving away from my partner, Jay Sykes, um, shortly thereafter. So um, I'm really excited to get to share London and James with you coming to Amazon Prime on Christmas Day. Um, I hope that you love it. I enjoyed making it. Uh, and I hope to hear all of your comments on social media. You can follow Salute the Moon Productions on Instagram uh, and on Facebook. Uh, and check us out for more.
All right, have a good one. Bye. Next up on the Amazon Prime press tour event of London and James, we have Jacqueline O'Day. Jacqueline O'Day is a fashion model, a trained actress and singer, and a full-time goddess. Jacqueline O'Day plays the monstrous character Mommy P, and her depiction of this psychotic character is one is that's going to give you the chills. Jacqueline O'Day, how did you get involved with London and James? Uh, well, before London and James, there was a day in the life that was um, Edwin's project, and um, I just got a message from him saying that he needed me to come or would I like to come? And I said, well, sure. And I showed up on set and did my thing and went on home. And then after life goes on, it was history after that. We went on to do other projects and then London and James came about. Um, so yeah, so that's how this all got started with me. Now, I would describe Mummy P as not your everyday kind of mummy character. No? This is, she's got a kind of like a bit of a psychotic edge to her. I mean, would that be a, I mean, I, that perhaps a fair description. Motherhood is hard. It is. <laughs> it, is. It, it really is. Yeah, and you just got to do it the way that you do it best. So, I mean, I guess maybe in everyday society, Mama P probably wouldn't, you know, be favored. But I did my best to raise my son uh, the best way that I can. And whether he wanted to accept it or not, um, he is a seed, you know, from me. And he's more like me than he probably would like to admit, so. Now, there are certain scenes which I'm not going to mention, um, but when you see the when they see the film, yeah. they'll know which scenes I'm referring to. Yeah, um, where you, there are you do certain things which are concerning, to say the <laughs> least. And in fact, I would say, and I actually know you outside of this, mm -hmm. um, and I would say that uh, I need to be vaccinated before actually meeting <laughs> Mommy P, for sure. Okay, okay. How did you prepare for the character? Oh, well, I study people. I am a people watcher. Um, I study behavior. Um, I think in doing that um, allows for not only understanding, but for forgiveness, because we come from so many different walks of life and, and life experiences that shape and mold you. And I mean, even with my own upbringing and watching, you know, the upbringing of my peers, I kind of just drew from life experiences and put them all together into Mama P. So yeah, everybody has a past um, and everybody is just doing what they need to do to get through the day, to get through life, to survive, depending on, um, how their life is unfolding day by day. So that's, Mama P is a culmination of a lot of people. It's not just one person, it's a lot of people and experiences of said people. Now you very aptly said everyone has a past, mm -hmm. but not everyone has a butler. And the person that plays <laughs> your butler <laughs> yes. is- um, He's gangster too. He, he is. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, uh, where did you find the actor who plays your part? Well, I, I didn't do the casting. Um, that would be up to Edwin and, uh, and Jay. So I believe he had done a project with B. Sheree Patterson before. Um, he sent out, he auditioned. He actually auditioned for a different role. But when we saw him come in, we were like, he has that butler He's got look. The butler and look, he, right? he, then we asked him to read for the butler. And we were like, yeah. That's what we need you to play that guy. You know, he was like, sure, I'll, I'll come through and I'll kill it. 
I think he's actually he may well actually be the person that takes over all the British actors that have historically played butlers. <laughs> Might be. Um, it could have, but you know, and there we were in that scene, and you really do have to get this film to see the film to to know where you actually have the real butler, Jeremy Butler, in the um, mm -hmm. film, and then you have the butler, and then you have Mummy P, yes. and you have London, mm -hmm. and there's a particular scene, mm -hmm. and you get to see the different layers of the characters mm -hmm. because when you watch this film, you ask your question, you ask yourself the question. Who's the baddie? Who are mm -hmm. the real baddies? Mm -hmm. And what makes someone bad? Mm -hmm. What makes someone a villain? Right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's like, like I said, you know, I think once you, at least for Mama P's character, um, in that particular scene that we will not um, go into great description, but in that particular scene, you start to um, understand why she is the way that she is. And um, you even feel some compassion for her um, because at the end of the day, she's human. You may not like the route that she's taken to get to where she's been, but she did the best that she could with what she had. And so you get to, you get to feel a little bit of compassion for Mama P in that, in that moment, in that, in that scene. And there is something about that whole mother son relationship um different scenes where you see different aspects of it and i'm curious as you both know each other how how did that come about in terms of working to working through that when did you both feel we, you got to the moment you thought that's right we hit it at that moment so i think i know what he's gonna say yeah you do um we had been waiting to work together. Like I've known her for a while, but we've been waiting to work together and be on screen together for a while. So um, there is a very intense scene that took place in a mansion style house. Mm -hmm. And that was the day that Edwin was talking about. It was like a 19 hour shoot day. Mm -hmm. And it was the very last scene. So by the time we got to that scene, I was like, I was out of it. Um, and I had to bring my, my performance up because it was a very intense scene. I had to get angry. And so <laughs> we say cut, we're taking a break. I'm making sure everybody's good, making sure the pizza's on the way for the actors. And then we're about to start again. Jackie stands up and pushes me in the chest as hard as she can. And I'm looking at her like, and then she does it again. And then the second time I instantly snap into it. I see what she's doing. I say, roll the camera. And that was probably the best take we had all night. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I knew then, I already knew, but that kind of further confirmed that she's like my ride or die. Like anything that I need handled, like she got my back. Before this project started, we had like so mm -hmm. many things going on. I had yeah. personal things going on in my life. She had personal things going on mm -hmm. in her life. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to tell that story? Um, I, I won't go too, too, deep, too deep into it, but... But why so, don't you share with us some real moments during pre-production where there were a series of events which almost caused concern for the production start date to even So I got happen. really, really, like, sick. Like, on the way out, like, Tom and Jerry going up the stairways. Yeah, <laughs> like, you, you know that it. scene? Where, like, like, on the way out, like, highway to Did heaven. Did you say Tom and Jerry? I yeah. I can't <laughs> saying that reference. Because like. everybody knows, like, when he dies and he goes up the little, like, escalator. <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah, like, highway to heaven, like, almost checked out. Like, I got really, really sick. And, um... Jay was very supportive during the time. Of course, I couldn't communicate a lot because I was in the hospital for um, a long time and I really, I just could not communicate a lot. I couldn't. And um, he was like, we're still gonna do this, this movie and we're gonna wait for you. And so thank goodness I was able to recover and do, you know, play the role. Um, when it came to that particular scene, I knew that they had a long day. Um, you could see the exhaustion on everybody. Like Edwin was tired, Jay was tired, everybody was tired. And I was tired too, but I wasn't as tired as them because they had hit like several locations that day. And so I, I, um, I'm a finisher. I like to make sure that we're gonna start, we're gonna finish. But if we're gonna finish, we're gonna finish strong. And so I was like, what do I need to do? Because I didn't want his exhaustion 
to out to to affect his delivery. And so I needed to pretty much punch him in the chest. Um, Twice. Yeah. His, you know, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, Mama P and, um, you know, James have a love-hate relationship. He, he loves his mom, but he hates her at the same time. He hates what she stands for. And so, yeah, I needed to kind of be like, okay. And that's what I did. B. Cherie didn't know that we were this close. Oh, okay. So when you pushed me the first time, she was watching like, like what's happening? <laughs> and what's I would, and down? I probably should have been like, what, what do you do? Relax. Like, <laughs> relax. relax. <laughs> and she was going through that. I was going through personal stuff. And I think this was either before, right before, no, right after you got better mm -hmm. and you were back at home. And we were talking on the phone and she could tell I was like really upset. And I was going through it. Like, I, it's rare that I ever feel that way. And again, she snapped me out of it. She was like, you need me to go handle this? And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I wasn't expecting <laughs> to hear her say something like that. And then we talked about it and she, you know, calmed me down. And I was literally about to postpone production because I had never been through anything like this in my life. So without her, wow. you know, being there and supporting it, without Edwin, you know, conversations with him, like, this wouldn't have happened. I guess I feel like I'm just finally moving in the direction with my tribe, you know? And so I feel like I would want somebody to be there for me like that. I, I, I don't have a problem. Like, I, you need something, what do you need me to do? And um, these gentlemen have come through for me in ways and provided me an opportunity to share my craft. And I'm thankful. And they have not just been the consummate professionals, but they've grown to be family and friends. And so, yeah, so that's where I am with them, um, with heart and soul. With anything they ask me to do, I don't mind at all. So you both used your personal ordeals and turned it into a triumphant mm -hmm. moment in terms of pouring it into the film itself, into yeah. the portrayal of your character, not only your individual characters, but on the relationship between the two as, as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that is something which um, clearly we can see um, with Mommy, Mama P's different turns and cycles within the film, we definitely see how the character of James changes yeah. um, as a result of that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're gonna go really into character. Okay, the method, the method of the madness begins. <laughs> but, that, but that is kind of, you know, that was the, that's the love and hate, you know, kind of relationship, you know, Mama P is, is a gangster and he, he he might not have liked her her way of doing things, but he's just as savage as his mom. So you created a monster, so. Yeah, yeah. 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 When, but uh, I will say that I would say to date though, probably with Edwin and Jay and Bronlin and everybody involved, this probably was the most fun thing to film. It was the most fun thing to film and everybody brought their A game. Like I, I had scenes with Edwin where I would be like, oh, I gotta like raise the stakes. I, Cause he's a phenomenal actor. Jay is a phenomenal actor. Bronlin, she was just like so vicious with it. And so um, I say that it was probably one of the most fun projects to work on because everybody was giving their all. You felt it. And you, it wasn't a competition. It was like, we got to match. Yeah. We got to, if you're here, then I got to be here too. And that it just kept the whole momentum through the whole movie. Tom. Tom. Uh, I mean, Brock. everybody. Brock. You put an imprint on his face. Yeah, I kind shout of. Out to, shout out to Farone. Far yeah. One. He, he was an amazing, can I even say what he was? He was an amazing actor. He was an amazing actor. Let's say he was actor. an amazing actor. Um, Who plays the character Brock. Yes. Mm -hmm. that's, he's actually one of my um You think you don't friends. like Mama P. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not going to like Brock. But uh, that's actually one of my high school friends. We did our first movie. I think I was in the ninth grade and he was an upperclassman. So I thought he was like way cooler than me. <laughs> um, but that's where we first started. And then uh, me, him and Edwin, we got like this brotherhood thing going. We got our own little circle mm -hmm. with Jackie and mm -hmm. maybe like one or two other people. Mm -hmm. Like these are the people that I really trust. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, 
the character of James, you play in a very understated way. And of course, when we know about James' upbringing, we understand more about why that is. Mm -hmm. The character of Brock is very much um, someone who the audience will see <laughs> plays a very a, another important role in yeah. this film as well. And the uh, portrayal of that character, again, is something that, yes, Mummy P might have some questions to ask about that mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when this film comes out on Christmas Day on Amazon Prime, we're going to find out all of the, you're going to find out all of what we're talking about now and you're gonna piece it all together and you're probably gonna be playing this back again just to actually after yeah. you watched it and then just mm -hmm. just just mm -hmm. match everything against it. But Jacqueline O'Day, yes, the model, the actress and the singer <laughs> and the just just so you know so everything. many so many other things. <laughs> Tell us why should people go and buy this film on December the twenty fifth? Well, because, duh, I'm in it. That's a fact. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, well, I, I think I won't give the traditional, I won't leave with the traditional answer. It's because, um, because I truly believe in what these gentlemen are doing. Um, I think that we need to support more independent films. Um, there are people um, out here that are creating that, um, are really putting out some quality work. And um, no, we may not be Hollywood yet or, or anything or industry, um, deep, deep in the industry just yet. But, and, and I feel like that should not be overlooked. You, there's a lot of amazing work that's being put out that people are putting their blood, sweat and tears, their money, their heart and soul, and they're producing um, amazing movies and, and, and videos and songs, and it should not be overlooked. So for me, I guess, um, it, it may look, um, when you see it, when you, um, op you know, open up Amazon Prime and you, and you look at it and you're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe, but you may not understand that that person might've had their last $10 worth of gas just to get to set and still gave it their all. Um, and you would never know all of the things that go on behind the scene just to come together to make something so amazing. So yeah, um, that's my first, my first answer. And of course, because it's a good movie. It's a good movie and I'm a movie snob, so. <laughs> It's a good movie, and I'm not just saying that because I'm in it or my friends are in it. It is a it's a quality film. I would never recommend a film that I wouldn't like myself. You won't be disappointed. You will not be disappointed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next up on the Amazon Prime press tour event, we have the wonderful Shardell. Shardell, as many will know, is a television personality. She's also a producer, director, and the list goes on. Now, we're going to talk to Shardell to find about her involvement in the film, London and James. Shardell, welcome. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I love your energy, by the way. It's like so soothing. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Very kind. Um, yeah. So you're here today to tell us about your own involvement in yeah, the film yeah. London and James. Yeah. Tell us more. Absolutely. Well, I'm really here to support, um, to see these guys and their journey is just absolutely monumental. And I think it's very important for creatives to support other creatives because it takes so much time, dedication, consistency to be able to produce a product. And to see Edwin and Jeremy, just the elevation. I remember two years ago, um, they came on Fox 45 to promote their, their film. And it was just so um, just monumental to see what they created a day in the life. And to see these brothers take their creativity and artistic expression and have a passion and to be able to implement that in the physical dimension because it takes so much work, Queen, to produce quality art. So I'm here to support, um, give my love, give my vibe, and I am so impressed on the work that they're doing and that they will continue to do. Why do you think it's important for people to support this particular film? Absolutely. It takes courage. It takes courage to go for your dreams, and I'm really big on that. I'm really big on encouraging people, whatever your thing is, whether that is creating a film, whether that's producing, um, 
you know, a visual album, whether it's whatever the thing is, it takes courage to be free and to put whatever ideas that you have out there. And I am a big believer on that, especially when it comes to art. And I want to encourage people to really support this film. It's great work. It has an awesome narrative. And it's very, very vital for us to understand the power of the arts. Because nothing to me is more powerful than art. If you really think about it, whether it's music, whether it's film, whether it's media, we control perception of reality. So it's so important for us to support when it comes to creative expression. Now, London and James has some very interesting characters in it. Yes. From Mama P mm. to the character of James, London, and of course, Brock, and, and many others. Yeah. I know it's a tough question. Uh oh, I knew you were going to ask me that question. Which character is your personal favorite? Oh, my goodness. You know, that is a really, really tough one. I don't know if I have a personal favorite because I love them all. But what I will say is every single character is different. So when you watch this film, you're gonna really understand that. And also you can relate to all these characters as well because every single character in this film has someone that you're like, oh my gosh, I've been there. So there's also a personal connection when it comes to this film. Shardell, yes. um, moving forward, yes. what would you like to see in the future for the careers of the filmmakers? Excellent question. What I would like to see is to take their brilliance to a completely different level. The gift is there, the talent is there, and who gives us these talents? God gives us these talents. But so often, because of fear, because of self-doubt, because of not feeling good enough, we hold ourselves back, right? I know the feeling. And it's so important for creatives, not even if you're a creative, whatever you're into, to understand that gift was given to you by the Most High, go for your dreams. I want us as artists to be able to produce films of such magnitude and value that it inspires other people to believe in their goals and ambitions. Thank you. One last question yes, I'd like to say is that many people, as you've just indicated, talk mm -hmm. themselves out and doing things that they really yeah. want to do. Real talk. And even with the making of this film, I mean, Jeremy or, you know, or B, Cherry Patterson could have said, I don't have $50 million. Yeah. I don't, to make this film, mm. which is what I really would want to make a full blown out action film that Hollywood makes. But they took time out and said, we're going to make this film no matter what. Yes. Tell me, in today's world, in 2020, in seeing the different visions that we have mm -hmm. in 2020 vision, can you tell us where you think London and James should be heading in terms of people going out to get this film on Christmas Day on yes. Amazon Prime. Yes. I love the fact what you said that, you know, this film wasn't created in Hollywood, but guess what happened? Two people came together and understood that they wanted to create something. You see, everything we see was once a thought. Everything, <laughs> literally everything. So it takes so much courage to be able to say, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. So anybody who is watching this right now, understand that you have to be willing to support the arts. It's very important to support it, okay? And it's also an inspiration to you as well. Whatever your dream is, whatever your goal is, if these guys can do it, why can't you? Go out there and support creative brilliance. It's bigger than you realize. Shardell? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oops, what's that? Champagne? A lovely jubbly. I see some bubbly. It's time to celebrate. Ladies and gentlemen, I name this film London and James. Woohoo! Yes! Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> I'm a professional champagne. Let's do it! Celebrate in 2020. I know that's right. Celebrate in 2020. Let's have you. This probably will be our only New Year's celebration. Oh, I gotta pour you a glass. Yeah. I'm just gonna drink from the bottle, but I mean, I mean, you can if you want to. You can. I gotta, I
Mine was trash. <laughs> wow, I feel like we're going to toast to hard work. To hard work, to London, to London to change, Woo! to creativity. Yes. To creativity, yes. Oh, yeah, I'm taking this ball. Good. <laughs> Is it it's strong boy? <laughs> Remember, Mark, you said that he did. Give it that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I did fill your joint up. My bad. I'm already drunk. I mean, my bad. All you do is. Yeah. 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 Yeah.